that's uh, my short introduction on GraphQL. Um, hopefully, we're going to get Ivan Gunsharov. He's going to correct me on that one, I hope. Uh, so he's a really interesting guy. He uh, started the APIs.guru website service. Uh, if you don't know, really do check it out. It's very interesting. There's some good information out there. Um, and well, he's uh, very good with REST APIs, but also with uh, GraphQL and everything open API related. Um, so we're going to try this thing. Uh, he was online like half an hour ago. <laughs> and he still is. Look at that. <coughs> so I'm going to mute my microphone. Hi, so you hear me? Yeah? Okay, yeah, I see myself. So, uh, yeah, I'm from Ukraine and I actually forget about Eurovision. So, thank you for uh, reminding me. I like totally miss this, this event. Maybe I'm not so into pop music. Um, but today, uh, I will speak about GraphQL and uh, about a little bit about why we slowly move into GraphQL. Yes. So, a little bit about us. So, I will share my screen in a second. Yeah. So, you, you should. Oh. Yeah, you should see my screen. So it's our website, and we go by the name IPS Guru, and uh, we specialize in development of tooling. So if you have some IPI tool in mind around REST or GraphQL, you can hire us. And previously, uh, we we work more, mostly with uh, Swagger or Open API uh, specification uh, and build tools around it. But recently, we, we made a switch to GraphQL. So all our new project is about GraphQL. Uh, by the way, if you have some some problems with the sound, uh, so just send me a message. And then, yeah, so we produce a couple of GraphQL projects. Uh, but the most popular is the Voyager. And we will talk today about it. Uh, OK, great. Uh, so, yeah, why GraphQL and uh, why why we make this move? So a little bit of context. So we personally don't have front end and we don't have a back end. So we focused on develop uh, API tooling. So our previously our most uh, our most uh, famous project was Redoc. So it's an uh, engine for your Swagger open IP, API documentation. So we create tools like that. So like documentation generator, like tools which uh, check your uh, Swagger specification, things like that. And for us, yeah, so because we don't fall into category of front-end developers and back-end developers, that's why certain things are more important for us. And to provide context and explain a little bit about GraphQL, so I will show you this tool. It's called Graphical, and it's created by Facebook. And usually it's a company in GraphQL. So uh, you, if you have GraphQL API, you use it every day. And this tool is basically interactive console, similar like, for example, Swagger UI. And you create a request on it. And it's have really nice after completion. So every time I want to. So like in this occasion, um, it's like demo API. Uh, you can play with it under graphql.org uh, uh, swipe graphql it's a star wars api so the, uh, database populated with a lot of data about star wars characters films uh, planets things like that and you can query it using graphql and you create and uh, request interactively so for example right now we're asking a name of uh, all characters of uh, Star Wars. So Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, Darth Vader. Uh, but what's great about GraphQL, it's not only that you can query some simple request, it's that you can 
Uh, you can query nested data. So in this case, I will ask for for all the films. So we ask for uh, characters, and right now we will see all the films featuring this, um, these characters. So you see it's Luke Skywalker, and he was featured in four films. Uh, and this is great from uh, for front end engineers that don't need to do multiple requests. They can ask nested data. Uh, but what's more important for us is that every every level have a type behind it. So there is a, uh, there is a type called person. So like there is a special docs button, you open it and you can go and see that uh, all people have type of people connection. It's have an array of people, this one, and it's have type person and it's have certain field with certain types and you can go to like person to film connection to film so you can explore a type system. Uh, so, uh, in comparison to REST, uh, GraphQL is strong typed, and there is uh, a type system behind every every uh, object, every node of the graph. Uh, but what's what's more important for us? Um, by the way, these two are uh, powered by a feature called introspection. So when you start it, it's dynamically querying the backend and asking for for metadata, something like uh, Swagger or Open API, but it's embedded directly in inside GraphQL server. So you can ask any GraphQL server about the types. So in this case, we will ask about person and. You start your query with special field called dash dash type, and inside it you can get a name. So we, we just get the same value person. But what's interesting, so to have a kind. So we will find out that person is an object, and we also have a fields. And for every field, you can ask, for example, name. And you can ask type of the field, and you can continue and continue and explore entire type system. And when we start working with GraphQL, uh, we use this tool graphical and we use documentation tab. But we constantly thought about why nobody represented as a graph, because it's like GraphQL, so it's have a graph in the name. Why it's why it's uh, not represented as a graph. And you, by the way, you have all the necessary data. You can query it by API itself and get everything you need. So we create this tool. It's, uh, mm, right now it's in demo mode, but you can install it for your GraphQL API. It's, it will work with every spec compliant GraphQL API. And in this case, we expose the same IP as that I showed you before. So we have a root type, and it's have number subtypes. So for example, in, in the query that I showed before, uh, we went to a person type, and from a person type, we went to a film type. So you see, uh, GraphQL is, uh, with, with boxes and arrows actually represents uh, how backend work. So in your query, you can follow every possible arrow. So we move from arrows to arrows. And we have a nice feature. If you click on uh, certain types, you can see all connections, all input edges and output edges. Uh, what's even more interesting, you, you can see that there is a cycles. For example, you can go from a film to a person and you can go from person to film. And uh, because we cannot put uh, all available information on the graph itself, that's why we also create a, a panel where you can see 
different description and more detailed information, but it's synchronous. So every time you click on something here, it's also highlighted on the graph itself. And you can know uh, with this type of tool that it's hard to describe, it's more interesting and cool to play with it and explore it by yourself, especially for your own API. Uh, but you know, we develop this tool with uh, mostly like developer use case in mind, but we was approached by some people who uh, really like it because it's it's not only uh, representing your GraphQL API, it's representing your domain. So it's represent entities in your domain and connection between them. So they were was able to show with with like a graph with diagram to uh, non-technical people like business people to to show what data they have in backend and allow them to explore with data. Um, it's pretty cool, and it's um, it's not only our tool. It's like uh, entire think about GraphQL. It's try to minimize technical knowledge you, you need to have in order to use it. So, I actually, don't know what to show more. Like we have. Um, as features like you can click on I and travel, you can travel between types and it's, it's scalable so you can make it smaller or bigger. Um, it's working nicely for small IPS, so obviously if, if it's more entities in your IPS, that's mean uh, we cannot always fit it in one screen. Uh, I can show you like one more API, for example, it's open trip planner. Yeah, as I understand, uh, Helsinki transportation system use GraphQL on the backend and they make it public so you can explore it also in our, tool, in our demo. So you can, we can go to query type and see that there is a stop type and uh, type stop have. Uh, by the way, it's interesting feature that types can reference itself. Yeah. Yeah, I need to click it. Yeah, no, this one. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's hard to click, but it's, uh, I believe it's, uh, yeah, parent station. Yeah, so this type, so type, uh, and you can go to a stop and you can ask for parent station and you can ask for parent station of parent station. That's why we think it's, uh, uh, for REST API, it's enough of that documentation, like really long for documentation. Uh, but for GraphQL, you cannot uh, describe every possible query. Uh, that's why you need to describe graph itself. You need to present the graph to the developer. Uh, that is what's basically its purpose for our tool. If you, in our demo, uh, ah, by the way, there is like, um, two modes for GraphQL, there is like uh, kind of like modes. Uh, query in which you can ask for data and there is annotations when you can change something. Uh, so yeah, for this API we don't have mutation, for your API I also don't have. For example, for GitHub. Yeah, so for GitHub we actually have mutation. Uh, Many public GraphQL APIs actually read only. Yeah, this is the thing I talked before. So if we open really big API with a lot of entities and GitHub have a lot of entities like users, repos, uh, projects, thing like that. And everything is interconnected. So we need, we still need to work on uh, figure out how to visualize the bigger graphs. But if for smaller one, it's working normally. So for example, yep, yep type to look like that. So it's super simple. It's even simpler than uh, Star Wars API. Um, if you want to play more with uh, GraphQL APIs, because uh, no one example is not enough, plus it's like artificial example. If you want to play with more like real life APIs, 
we create this list on GitHub. It's list of public GraphQL API and the restricted button. And the restricted button will open a graphical environment that I showed you before. And you can make queries in it and way and uh, understand uh, pros, and cons, pros and cons of GraphQL for front-end developers. And uh, yeah, so yeah, digit transit. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically all. If you're interested in our other tools, you can go to Apis Guru, uh, Apis Guru website. And this is the one like uh, one that I showed you right now. Uh, it's GraphQL Voyager. We also create a couple of more, like they're more complicated and yeah, like, uh, but Voyager is a, a cool example of what you can build on top of GraphQL API. And it's showing you the, why it's different from REST. It's not only like performance difference, uh, not only like uh, you can ask multiple queries at the same time with round trips, but it also provides more, uh, more opportunities for tooling development uh, and it's provide like really nice uh, metadata about IP. It's called introspection. In GraphQL, it's called introspection. You can ask a question about types and fields and receive answers and build interesting representation. One of which, which is Voyager. So that's probably it. If you have like a question, oh, I don't know how to how to communicate. Maybe maybe you will enable the microphone. Can you hear us? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. So thanks a lot, Ivan. Um, like we should actually give you a round of applause. <coughs> yes. You can hear that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that was really interesting. Um, so. Basically, with GraphQL, we get more power, uh, but that also increases complexity. So then we need tools like the Voyager to guide us through the whole thing. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for for you know working on this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna just ask if there is any questions, and I'll repeat them to you then, mm -hmm. uh, so they're clear. So people, shoot! <laughs> Everyone's just baffled. By the way, I saw some people with uh, stars in their eyes. <laughs> yeah, I can comment on what you talk, uh, what you said about complexity, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's like two-sided situation. Uh, on one side, it's uh, added complexity, but for front engine, uh, Facebook uh, official, you know, like you need the goal. For every technology, you need a design goal. And for Facebook, design goal was to simplify work of front-end engineers. So if they had the option to make it easier for back-end uh, developers or front-end developers, they actually choose front-end developers. Mm -hmm. So like you, you can learn basic syntax of how to make queries in around hour or two. Uh, and after that, you can just play. And after completion, is really in, in this API console that I showed you. After completion, is a really nice feature. You can uh, you don't need to read documentation. Just can start and explore API and explore how different types are connected together. So it's definitely simple for front end engineers. It's adding some challenges for back end engineers, but it's all for flexibility and for exploration. So that mm -hmm. exploration for REST IPS mean like you're just scrolling IP documentation and you find something. Mm -hmm. uh, here exploration is mean like you, you make with queries and you can you allow to do queries with arbitrary complexity. You can limit it on the servers obviously to not uh, to not my uh, overall server. But yeah, so this is the idea behind GraphQL and philosophy. All right. Well, thanks for clarifying. Um, that gave some, some time for, for people thinking up questions. Mm -hmm. okay. How can I load my own schema to the GraphQL Voyager if I have an app with a schema 
and I won't maybe have it privately, so that it's not publicly available. Right. So the question is, how how can well, Ant um, yeah, Anton, uh, yeah. use it for his own projects and like mm -hmm. can use it in private? Or did yeah. you hear the question? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I heard it. Yeah, yeah. So I sorry. Oh, yeah, I will show it one more time. So um, there is two options. One option is. Um, in our demo, you can click uh, custom schema um, box. You, uh, you can copy introspection query, execute it in uh, inside graphical. I, I can show you. So you copy a query, you switch to here, you copy paste it. It's like quite big query, but it's asking about everything. It's asking like all possible data about this IP. You get result. You copy it, you put it here. So, and you export the result. It's one option if you just want to quickly try it. Yeah. And just the second one, you can actually, oh, sorry, you can add it for your own IP. And we have like example of HTML, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just connect in uh, one file, and that should be all. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and mm -hmm. by the way, I will post uh, a link into meta page or on YouTube somewhere where people can find find them. Yeah, and I think also with Yahoo, we can uh, put the links also in the YouTube video. Then. Cool, Julia. Uh, how tightly integrating can it be with JSON LD and uh, schema.org vocabulary? Did you hear that? or? About integrating schema work for KBR into GraphQL, yeah? yeah and J uh, JSON LD as well. Yeah. Ah, JSON LD. Uh, there is some similarity, uh, but GraphQL initially was designed for for like linked data inside your organization. Uh, it wasn't designed to create like public uh, publicly linked data. So there is no embedded mechanism, but nothing prevents you from generating GraphQL types out of uh, schema work or JSON OD. So we can uh, just map them into GraphQL. I'm not sure if one-to-one -one mapping is possible, but in GraphQL, um, we have basic type system. It's um, probably more limiting than JSON OD. So it's more uh, like OP-like because it has interfaces, objects, uh, unions. Uh, it's more like, you know, similar to type system we have in a popular programming language. And I'm not sure that you can actually map everything, but you can try. Uh, out of box, uh, there is no, no features or projects I'm aware of linking schema or JSON OD into GraphQL. But it's uh, it's pretty flexible technology, so you can figure out how to do some crazy stuff with it. All right. So in your experience, uh, <clears throat> what kind of uh, backend architectures are behind the GraphQL APIs? So of course, like, for the developer or for the front end, it looks very simple, nice, but you need to take care of, of things in the back end. So mm -hmm. like if you have any thoughts, experiences. Yeah, yeah so um, what's interesting, um, as I said before, we don't have our own backend, but we monitor everything that's going around GraphQL. And uh, there is multiple videos, it's a pretty popular topic, and companies sharing, sharing the experience. Uh, I cannot remember which, which company talk about that, but um, what's interesting, in, it's actually a trend. In many companies, GraphQL is promoted by front-end developers, so they create something called front, uh, backend for front-end. So they putting proxy, uh, in between uh, front end and back end. So they run in their own server, proxy server, and it's proxy data from REST to GraphQL. 
uh, and it's uh, made by uh, by front end engineers. Uh, I can't remember which company actually did it, um, but it's one of the big one. Uh, something like Shopify, but I'm not sure. And it's one one option is to create a proxy, and it's allow you to play with GraphQL without. Uh, uh, affecting your backend, uh, affecting your existing customers. Second option is to implement uh, full feature GraphQL server. And in many cases, people are actually using GraphQL as a way, as gateway to microservices. So you have multiple microservices, and it's hard to communicate with it with with small servers, uh, it's a lot of, uh, and you don't want to expose like a bunch of microservices to to application or front end. So we need to put something in between and GraphQL use for that purpose. Uh, if we speak about integration with databases, so there is like a couple of solutions. If you have something really, really simple, there is a project called Post, uh, Postgres GraphQL or Post GraphQL, something like that. So it's automatically exposing your Postgres uh, uh, database as a GraphQL server. Uh, obviously, there is like some limitation in GraphQL. Uh, resulting GraphQL API is very similar to to tables in your database. There is no like abstraction between them, uh, and like third option, you can actually generate um, right um, real GraphQL server. In that case, it looks scary because in GraphQL or uh, in REST API, it's one-to-one -one mapping. So you have an endpoint. You know what JSON data you need to return. You can craft manually craft a select request, which return back uh, like all the data you need. So basically, for for many implementation, it's like URL map to a function, and function use like handcrafted select. For GraphQL, everything a little bit harder, but at the same time, it's not like uh, it's crazy hard. Basically, for every type you have, uh, for every field you have a resolve function, which is kind of callback, and you specify how to get data for this particular field, and rest is handled by uh, GraphQL engine itself. There is a reference implementation for JavaScript and for many other languages, and what most of them are doing is calling callback for certain fields to return a data. Uh, for this level, and uh, library automatically handle all recursion or like uh, you know embedded data. So it's handled uh, by server side library. You don't need to manually uh, figure out uh, or parse requests. Uh, you just need to provide a callback for every type. So I would recommend you if you want to try something. Um, around GraphQL to write simple proxy. And when it's allow you to iterate fast and without worries that you broke something. And when you will be ready to make a like, bigger move to write uh, like full feature of GraphQL API based on your database or like other data source. All right, thanks, Ivan. Uh, I think that, except if someone really has a very important question still to ask. Uh, no, looks good. All right, um, then we can move on. Thanks a lot, Ivan. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know if Jack already mentioned, but uh, we owe you uh, uh, Amazon gift card, so that will yeah. find his way to you. Uh, <laughs> so, with loves from Finland, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and, and we'll really appreciate it that you take the time for doing mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll take a picture very quickly now, and we'll send it to you mm -hmm. as well, of all the people listening here to you. Uh -huh. OK. 
<laughs> Wait, I need to go back even because there are so, so many of them. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'll send that with some delay as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for this opportunity to speak about GraphQL and our work and IPI tooling in general. Yeah, thank you. And let's keep mm -hmm. in touch. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Uh, you want to hang around, by the way? The yeah, 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 I, yeah, I will hang around and listen. But obviously, I need to stop screen sharing. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Cool. All right, but then we move on. Um,